Hi, I'm Dean with Old English Outfitters, and today we're going to be talking about the M&P 2.0 Metal Competitor. So these were recently announced. They were available for viewing at SHOT Show, and luckily we were able to get a couple in. Plus this thing was just loaded with features for a really reasonable price, about the same as the standard M&P Metal. So not all that much money, and you do get a really nice raced out competition pistol. So starting from the bottom, they give you four magazines in the box. These are just the standard 17 round magazines. Uh, they do have this polymer extension. It is hollow though, so it does not add any capacity, um, but it does make the magazines index into the mag well quite nicely. They sit out so you still get positive contact with your palm. Aluminum frame, just like the M&P metal. It's the same exact dimensions, uh, same rail length and everything, so it's, it's the same frame. Uh, and just like the metal, you do have several polymer pieces that are fit into the frame. Those all come out to leave the exposed aluminum frame. Different than the metal, uh, you do have this mag well on the bottom. It slides on from the front of the frame, and then there is one pin. And it's the exact same pin as your takedown tool for any standard m and uh, this just slides in sideways, and then you cam it shut, and it locks the mag well in place. It's a very sturdy lockup, and that's a rather long pin. Uh, so that mag well is not going anywhere, and there is zero play in the mag well. This is a very nice fit for this gun. Uh, came with four back straps. This is just the medium. I find that that works well for me on M&Ps. For some reason, all of our competitors came without the front strap epoxied in. So this is a snap fit piece. On the standard metal, uh, they were epoxied in, so you could not get them out. Whereas this one, you can hear the rattle, is not epoxied in. Uh, you can pop it right out. So I am most likely going to have to use some Gorilla Glue or something to get that affixed in place permanently. Um, not a huge detractor because it, it doesn't come out while you're shooting, but it does have that annoying rattle. Now this has uh, the M&P 2.0, the new single piece trigger, which it starts out rather gritty in any of the M&Ps I've used that have this trigger. It starts up very gritty, but after you get a couple hundred rounds through, it really smooths out to where you do have a good amount of take up, but there is no perceivable grit. You can't hear it anymore. The break is very short, it's very crisp, and the reset is just the same. A very short and distinguishable reset. Uh, now the metals all have this screwed in over travel stop, which is great. It doesn't have as much play as a standard m and I also have a compact with the same trigger system, and it does have a little bit of over travel. Not much, but a little bit, so this really does fix that. Moving up from there, no thumb safety. Uh, the metals are not offered in any thumb safety configurations yet. They're not even cut for it, so sorry to those of you who like that. Not available in the metals. Uh, it does have an extended ambidextrous slide stop. It does jut out a little bit from the frame, and I do like that. It's not as uh, gaudy as the Glock extended slide stop. It's very easy to kick up. Uh, this really has only been positive for me. I, I, I don't find myself kicking it up and locking the slide open middle of a string of fire. Uh, but it is very easy to thumb down if you're going to do speed reloads or anything like that. Uh, standard takedown lever for the M&Ps, nothing new there. Uh, now one thing I am happy about, on the metals, they replaced the roll pins for disassembly with just steel pins. So you don't have to deal with the roll pins and using roll pin punches and potentially ruining them every time you take the gun apart. Uh, they're just standard steel pins. So that's a huge improvement over the, the standard M&Ps just right off of there. Now moving up to the slide, the, uh, the part of this gun that is very distinctly different from a standard M&P metal. So first things first, this is of course a five inch barrel. So you're gonna have a little bit better ballistic performance out of the nine millimeter and a little bit more velocity. Uh, the first thing you will notice, or the first thing I noticed, is the different slide serrations that are available on this gun. So this is the first of the new M&Ps that has the different set of serrations, different than those fish scale serrations. Now, I do like those, they do work well, but I find these a lot more aesthetically pleasing, and they do work just as well. Grabbing the skin for press checks, or if you're going to run your slide entirely forward of the ejection port because of a, a top mounted red dot. Uh, these look, they look great and they work great too. The sights, this came with a very nice set of fiber optic sights. It's a completely blacked out rear and then a fiber optic front. Now one thing I did discover after I had this thing for a couple days is this is actually a tritium backed fiber optic. 
Uh, I had it on my coffee table at night and I was like, what is glowing? And sure enough, it was the front sight. So I did not realize that that is also a night sight as well. A very good addition, similar to how True Glow does theirs. It's that dual fuel or whatever you want to call it, tritium backed and then the fiber optic. So the, the fiber optic picks up and amplifies the tritium in low light conditions. Now this is optic cut. It has the M&P Core optics cut. It comes with a whole bunch of different plates. So uh, you can put pretty much whatever you want on there. Aside from, I don't believe there was a 509T plate included there, and there typically isn't on all these optics ready systems. They just don't seem to be putting one out yet. Um, but I went with a Holosun 508 because I had it lying around, that nice RMR footprint, and it looks and shoots very well. Uh, I do like the M&P core mounting system. It's a very simple mounting system. Typically makes every optic direct thread. You're not threading into a plate and threading the plate into the slide. Uh, it positions the optic in a way where you can use those screws direct down into the slide. So just a little bit sturdier, probably negligible as far as strength of the screws goes, but I like that it's less complicated, just less screws, less thread locker, simpler system. Now forward of there, we do have several lightning cuts done on the slide. Now this is not ported whatsoever. It is just windows through the slide. Now I do think porting would have been a welcome inclusion in every different competition or performance center m and they've done pretty much the barrel has been ported and this slide is cut exactly for where the standard m and porting is which is a single elongated port on either side of the barrel uh, typically like you know, 11 o'clock and one o'clock and it would have worked perfectly with this system so i'm not sure why they didn't do it um i'm seeing I'm guessing it may be due to reliability issues, which we'll talk about in one second. And then you do have three lightning ports on either side of the slide. In addition, I believe this is the first pistol that has come from the factory with a bob cut, which I think is just very pleasing to look at. It's another way to keep weight down. Um, you don't really need all that excess material. So they, not only they did a bob cut, but it is excellently chamfered and blended into the lines of the slide. So they didn't just take this slide and but do it on a belt sander. They, they actually took time to radius it so that it looks nice and is not a, a snag point or anything like that. The barrel is a very accurate barrel. I did group it and I was getting very good groups at about mm, 10 meters, which is typically where I like to zero and group my pistols just to test the accuracy on them. And it was shooting very well. Now, one thing to note about the sights and the optic cut, these are in no way co-witness sights. So if you are looking for some sort of co-witness sight, you're gonna have to buy some aftermarket. Uh, I went with Dawson Precision. They're in the mail right now, and I'll put them on as soon as I get them. Uh, those are some of my favorite sights because they're, they're machined really well, very clear sight picture, and they're really not all that expensive. If you just get the, the steel or the fiber optic front, they only run you about maybe 60 bucks. So they're very affordable and pretty easy to install. Now, reliability. I was having a few different issues. There weren't many. I've probably had a total of four malfunctions in 500 rounds that I've put through this gun. Um, and they were all failures to eject stove pipes, things of that nature. I didn't have any double feeds or, or failure to feeds or anything like that. It was all things that make me suspect that the slide is not having enough velocity to get back and, and clear that round out. Probably I'm thinking it's because number one, this is just an overall heavier slide that has more material. Now it does keep the weight down. Actually the, the whole package without the optic or the light comes in about an ounce less than the standard M&P metal. And a lot of that has to do with the relieving of the metal on the slide there. So the actual weight of the slide is not that different, but there is a lot more barrel here for the slide to touch and therefore a lot more friction. Cerakote, while very durable, is not exactly a slick coating unless you go with the Cerakote Elite. So I'm guessing it's a little bit of a break-in period where you need to wear the inside of the slide to the barrel and then you're not going to have those problems. I, I, those four malfunctions were really concentrated in the first 100 to 200 rounds of my review process. So. I'm thinking that the gun's going to break in and it's not going to be a problem. And then the only other thing I had that uh, I discovered later is this had a rather weird ejection pattern. Uh, some would go to three, some would go straight back at my face. I actually had a couple go forward and to the left side of the gun, which I have never ever seen a pistol do in my entire life. I discovered later it's because these guns are really meant to shoot 124 and when I was shooting 115 while the gun would work 
I was having some odd ejection. So once I switched to exclusively 124 grain, uh, I had standard ejection to three o'clock, no problems there. So just something to note for you, it will work with 115 and things like that, but you may you may have to use 124 if you want standard ejection, if you're particular like that. Uh, overall, I really like this gun. I like how it looks, I like how it shoots, I like how it performs. The, the M&P 2.0 texture really does stick in your hand quite well. The lines of the gun are nice. Uh, recoil impulse is very nice. Five inch guns typically are. They like to sit flat and shoot straight. So a uh, very nice gun. This would be an awesome competition pistol. And it's just an awesome M&P period. Um, the nice thing about the M&Ps, something that most people don't really say is the 2.0s, the newer ones, they do have slider interchangeability. So I can put my compact slide on here. And while it does sit very close to the front of the frame, it does not sit behind the front. And it does function, it does cycle. I've put probably mm, 20 rounds through it with the compact slide on it just to try it. So if you have multiple M&Ps, you can swap the slides back and forth with no reliability issues. Smith & Wesson, I don't believe really recommends that, but uh, like I said, this is my personal gun. I like the looks of it and I wanted to try it and I will be keeping this one because it is a great shooter. And for not a lot of money, this is pretty much everything you'd want to do to have a competition pistol. This is an awesome offering. If you're looking for a nice competition pistol, sub $1,000 from a good reliable name, American-made company like Smith & Wesson, the M&P 2.0 Metal Competitor would be the gun for you. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, please like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. In addition, give us a follow on Instagram at OEOutfitters. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.